This house is mine now, Rachel. There's no room for you, so get out. My mother-in-law's cheerful voice filled the room, leaving Bob and me stunned. We had returned home to our city apartment after a successful birth in my hometown, only to find the door unlocked. Fearing an intruder, we cautiously entered, only to be greeted by my mother-in-law sipping tea in the living room, boldly declaring her claim. My name is Rachel. I met Bob at a social gathering, and later we got married, she announced. From the outset, my mother-in-law had never seemed to approve of Bob and I meeting at such an event. A woman who attends such a scandalous event will never be my daughter-in-law, she muttered upon our first encounter. But I silenced her with a smile, pointing out that Bob had attended the same scandalous gathering. Of course, the event in question was nothing of the sort. It was merely a gathering hosted by our colleagues from work. My mother-in-law, a single mother who had raised Bob with great care, seemed genuinely saddened when Bob moved out to get married. It appeared that her constant picking on me stemmed from this sadness. However, my strong heart prevented her attacks from having any effect. Frequently invading our home without invitation, my mother-in-law would take the train over knowing Bob was at work. As someone who only went into the office once a week and worked from home the rest of the time, I couldn't ignore her persistent doorbell ringing and knocking, especially considering the disturbance it caused to the neighbors. Bob, whose job required him to be out every day, was not around during the day to deal with her. My mother-in-law would then proceed to complain about dishes in the sink, laundry piling up, and every other household chore she could find. She would go through every room without hesitation, criticizing any task she saw being done casually. Her catchphrase seemed to be, poor Bob, to have such a wife. I should have raised him to expect much higher standards for women. Yet despite her disapproval, Bob's love for me remained unwavering, much to my mother-in-law's dismay. Originally, I had a preference for older, dapper men, but Bob, who is three years younger than me, pursued me fervently, leading us to date and eventually marry. Whenever my mother-in-law picked on me, Bob would become very angry. I always reported to him what my mother-in-law said, prompting him to call her and say, Mom, it's a hassle when you come without calling. Rachel isn't just hanging around at home, she's working. However, despite Bob's efforts, my mother-in-law never stopped coming unannounced. Instead, she often snapped at me, asking why I told Bob everything. Even before giving birth, I had grown accustomed to my mother-in-law's unannounced visits and complaints about housework. I no longer directly confronted her complaints. Instead, without taking my eyes off the computer screen, I casually responded to all her grievances with, ha, ah, I'm sorry, I'll do it next time. Despite my nonchalant attitude, I felt sorry for my mother-in-law, who seemed desperate to torment her daughter-in-law. Bob and I shared the housework, and I didn't pay much attention to my mother-in-law's complaints, simply thinking, ah, she's at it again. However, her words when I reported my pregnancy were particularly harsh. You're pregnant, child. Is it Bob's? Bob and I hugged each other in joy, his excitement evident as he gently stroked my flat belly, expressing his eagerness to meet our baby. Yet, my mother-in-law seemed to insinuate that I had conceived with another man. Huh? was my instinctive response, which only seemed to fuel my mother-in-law's anger. She continued with a scowl, accusing me, You've betrayed Bob and conceived a child with another man, haven't you? After all, you're unattractive and three years older than Bob. A woman like you and my Bob couldn't possibly have a child. Her confident statement ignited my fury, and I exploded, That's impossible. Please, go home. With that, my mother-in-law left the house, laughing and taunting, See? You're angry because I hit the nail on the head. I'm going to report this to Bob. True to her word, my mother-in-law likely told Bob that I was attempting to deceive him into raising a child from another man. But Bob swiftly shut down her accusations with a simple, that's impossible. Rachel would never hurt me. His laughter and kindness warmed my heart, and I felt genuinely grateful to be married to him. Several months had passed since I discovered I was pregnant and I had returned to my childhood home to prepare for the birth. 
Since my family's home was quite far from Bob's office, he usually stayed behind at our apartment. I missed you when you're not home, Rachel, Bob would tell me. While I found his sentiment sweet, I also cherished the opportunity to spend quality time with my parents in my family home. The day of my labor finally arrived, and as soon as my mother informed Bob, he immediately took time off work and rushed over. Seeing me in pain, Bob held my hand, his eyes welling up with tears as he whispered, I wish I could take your place. In my delirium from the pain, I yelled back, then do it, followed quickly by an apologetic, sorry, Rachel. I can't. Of course he couldn't, but Bob remained a steadfast source of encouragement throughout my labor. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I gave birth to our baby. As they placed our tiny newborn in my arms, a warmth flooded over me. Was this what it meant to be a mother? Overwhelmed with emotion, tears streamed down my cheeks. Bob, too, was deeply moved, repeatedly expressing his gratitude towards me. We named our son Jacob and spent several peaceful days at my family's home as we adjusted to our new roles as parents. Returning to our high-rise apartment, we were greeted with an unlocked door and my mother-in-law sipping tea in the living room. Despite her demeanor, acting as if the apartment belonged to her, I was puzzled as to why she was there in our home. Bob, did you give your mom a key? I asked quietly. He vehemently shook his head in denial. As I turned to him, puzzled, my mother-in-law snorted and proudly displayed a key she had placed on the table. I saw the key hanging at the entrance, so I borrowed it to make a copy, she admitted, seemingly pleased with herself. Indeed, we had a key hook at our entrance, but I never imagined my mother-in-law would steal it to make a copy, taken aback by her audacity. I was startled when my mother-in-law finally noticed Jacob in Bob's arms. With a smile, she looked at Jacob's face and then turned to Bob. Isn't that Rachel's child with some unknown man, Bob? You don't need to hold him. You're not the victim here. Just go home with me. You don't need to have anything to do with a woman like Rachel. Are you still claiming that this is our child? I don't mind if you have a DNA test done. Why should I have to do that? It's obvious when you look at him. The baby is ugly, just like Rachel. He looks nothing like my handsome Bob. As she spoke, my mother-in-law glanced from Jacob to Bob. But seeing the fury on Bob's face, she froze. Bob's glare was intense, his expression furious. Bob, I've always told you not to come to our place without asking and not to say mean things to Rachel. And yet you've made a duplicate key and come here. What is this? I watched as Bob confronted his mother. I was just trying to protect you. She tried to defend herself. What you're doing is not protecting me. All you've done is cause trouble for me. Rachel is not ugly. She's beautiful. And Jacob has a cute face. Don't insult my family, Bob asserted firmly. Your family is supposed to be me, right? In response to his mother's shaky question, Bob calmly replied, My family is Rachel and Jacob. While my mother-in-law stood frozen in shock, I quickly gathered up our valuables. Let's go somewhere else, Bob. Your mom seems to think this is her place. Where are you going? She demanded in a shrill voice. That's none of your business, I cheerfully replied. You said there's no place for me here, and I have work to do. So, we're moving. Goodbye. With that, Bob and I left the apartment. As we exited, Bob asked, What should we do? Change the locks. Considering the impending task of raising Jacob, I couldn't bear the thought of living in a place where my mother-in-law could drop in unannounced every day. No, let's move. We'll sell a house for now. Perhaps we'll rent a weekly apartment. Agreeing with my proposal, Bob and I temporarily moved into a weekly apartment, ready to start anew. During that time, Bob and I rented an apartment in a new condominium, marking the beginning of our move out of the house my mother-in-law insisted was hers. She genuinely seemed to believe she had a claim to the room in the tower residence where we used to live, and showed a confused expression when I let the movers in, exclaiming, What's going on? This room, you might think is yours, mother-in-law, but it's a house that Bob and I bought. The ownership of this house is Bob's, so you don't have any legal claim. I explained firmly as I held Jacob, 
observing Bob giving brisk instructions to the movers. My mother-in-law's face turned pale upon hearing this revelation. As she could have just returned to her original house, I wondered why she was so panicked. However, she answered my unspoken question with her next words. I have nowhere else to live but this house. I've already terminated the contract for my previous apartment, she confessed. I was surprised to learn that the apartment where my mother-in-law lived was a rental, and she had terminated the contract to live in this room. Bob, who had been listening to the conversation from a distance, was also taken aback. My mother-in-law then begged Bob and me, saying, please let me live in the house. However, Bob didn't allow it. As a final act of filial piety, he gave her a little money and told her, you should be able to get back on your feet if you rent a room with this money. Still unable to bear the fact that she was being abandoned by her beloved son, my mother-in-law clung to Bob, crying, where will you live, Bob? I'm lonely. Please live with me. But there was no way Bob would agree to that. I've told you over and over again to stop bullying Rachel, but you didn't stop, Mom. I appreciate that you raised me, but I wanted you to be happy that I've become independent and have a family. You relied too much on me, Mom. I think it's better for both of us if we never see each other again. With that, Bob made his stance clear, bringing an end to the emotional ordeal. At Bob's resolute words, my mother-in-law collapsed in tears, protesting, no way. However, Bob's determination remained steadfast. Since I hadn't shared the address of our new apartment with her, my mother-in-law could no longer come uninvited. The thought of not having to see her anymore brought immense relief. On the night we completed the move, my mother-in-law, who seemed to have calmed down, called Bob and me numerous times. This he taking care of Jacob, I hadn't paid attention to my smartphone and was startled to see the large number of missed calls late at night. I quickly set it to reject her calls. As her only son, Bob couldn't completely abandon his mom and took her calls for a while. However, each time Bob answered the phone, she began to spew insults about me. She even accused Bob of being brainwashed by me. Bob, usually kind and patient, seemed to be at his wit's end with the incessant ringing of the phone at all hours of the day and night. Mom, I've tried not to abandon you because you're my mother and you raised me with care, but I'm at my limit. Bob finally confessed, his voice heavy with emotion. Despite my repeated warnings, my mother-in-law wouldn't stop bad-mouthing Rachel, and I didn't think she would ever change. Mom, I won't answer the phone anymore, but I hope you can forgive me, Bob expressed, his voice heavy with guilt for having to sever ties with his own mother. It was clear he couldn't bear to hear his wife being disparaged every day. Receiving the declaration of severance, my mother-in-law was in tears on the other end of the phone. However, Bob firmly cut off all ties with her. Despite Bob, the landlord telling her to vacate within a week, my mother-in-law refused and continued to occupy the empty room. Confused by her refusal to leave, we consulted a lawyer. When we conveyed through the lawyer that we might sue her, it seemed she finally left the house. We weren't sure what kind of life my mother-in-law had been leading since then, but she had been receiving financial support from Bob. Now that it was gone, she must be living a financially strained life. On the other hand, Bob, Jacob, and I were living peacefully in our newly purchased home. We were relieved when a new tenant quickly bought the room in the tower residence that we had decided to give up. Bob took paternity leave, easing the burden of raising our child single-handedly. You're always working so hard, so I'll pick up the slack with the house chores during my paternity leave, Bob said, taking the lead in household tasks. Honestly, Bob is such a wonderful husband that I feel he's too good for me. Even when we had to deal with taking over my mother-in-law's house, I'm truly grateful to Bob, who stood with me through that ordeal. Recently, Jacob has learned to crawl and has been exploring the house. I spend my days smiling as I watch him with Bob, feeling grateful for the peaceful life we share.